Welcome 3D students. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a studio lighting setup so that you can use it for other scenes. It's going to have a backdrop and three lights, a key light, a fill light, and a backlight. And when we're done, you should be able to import whatever you want into the studio scene, adjust the lighting, and make a really nice render. So let's get started. So the first thing we need to do is create a new 3D Max scene file. It doesn't really matter where you save this scene file. It's not going to have any textures or anything like that. So just make sure you know where you put it so you can get back to it. So let's start by creating the backdrop. We're going to use a line. And in the left viewport, I'm going to zoom out. And we're basically going to create two lines going like this. So let's start up here. Hold down shift so it's straight. When you get down to the floor, click and then hold down shift again and come way past the origin and click. And let's right click, go to the modify tab, open up the modifier and get vertex mode and maybe make the backdrop, the back a little taller than it is. And now what we're going to do is make this vertex a smooth curve. But before we do, we want to make sure that both of these are positioned exactly on the ground. So select one of them. Make sure you have the Move tool selected. And come down here and find the Z coordinate and zero it out. And then do the same for the other one. Now your floor is exactly on the ground. Now let's make this vertex a smooth curve. And what we're going to do here is we're going to find in our settings... The geometry rollout and inside the geometry rollout we're going to find fillet and what you're going to do is select that vertex and then click and drag up to split it into a nice smooth curve now once you let go you can't adjust it so if it's not as not like you want it you have to undo it and then do it again but we want a nice smooth curve there okay now let's switch to the front viewport and exit subobject mode by clicking at the top of the modifier and move this over to one side. And then we're going to add an extrude modifier. So go to your extrude modifier, uh, go to your modifier list and find extrude and then extrude it out. Like so. And then let's go to the perspective view and see what it looks like. Mine happens to be in the right direction. Now, if you want to adjust this later, you simply need to adjust the extrude. Now, if your backdrop is not colored on the face here, if it's black like this, like mine is on the back, then you're going to need to do something. To fix that, what you're going to need to do is go to Spline Mode in your line object and find Reverse right here. And when you click it, you see mine turns black. So that's how you turn it inside out. It needs to be colored on the face here. Okay, the next thing we need to do is apply a gray material to our backdrop. So open up your material editor, create a physical material, and drop it onto the backdrop. Select the material, and then zero out reflections, and make roughness 1. And then let's create a stand-in object so we can adjust our lighting. Go to the Create tab. Go to Geometry, open up your uh, list here and find Extended Primitives, and we're going to create a torus knot. So select that, and then right in the middle of your scene, click and drag, let go, and create a torus knot, like so. If you need to adjust it, you can go back and adjust the different thicknesses and everything here to get it to look like you want it, but it should, should look something like this. Okay, I think my backdrop needs to be a lot wider, so I'm going to select it and extrude it a lot more, and then move it over. You don't want to see the edge of your backdrop if you're moving around your scene. So, so now let's create some lights. Let's switch to the front viewport, and then we're going to go to the Create tab, select Lights, switch to the Arnold Lights, click the Arnold light, 
and click and drag like so a targeted quad light down to your object. Switch to the left viewport, make sure it's centered over your object, and then let's adjust the size of this light. Right now it's 25 by 25. Let's make it bigger. With these lights, the size matters. And then let's switch to the perspective view. You can see the light there. And let's turn on active shade. And you can see we already have a really nice environment here. But we're going to make it look even better. Let's start by adjusting this light's shadow density. I'm going to make it 0.5 here. Then I'm going to expand my viewports by hitting Alt-W so that I can adjust my light and see the result here in this viewport. So I want this to be my key light. So I'm going to move it down in front and you can see the result in my perspective viewport that has active shade turned on. And I'm going to move it over to one side. And you can clearly see that now we have very pronounced shadows on one side. And that is why we need what's called a fill light. The fill light is meant to fill in these shadows but not eliminate them altogether. So let's just select this light and go ahead and drag it over to the other side so it's sort of opposite the key light. And let's make it less bright. So let's dial down the intensity of this light. Remember this is just supposed to fill in the shadows, not eliminate them all together. And then we need one more light. We need what's called a highlight or a backlight or a hair light. So select one of the lights and click and drag in the top viewport so that this light is behind and above the object. And you can see this creates some really nice highlights on it. And, but it doesn't need to be as bright as it is. Oh, that's the wrong adjustment. So let's dial the intensity of that one down a little bit. Now how this should look is really up to you. The key light could be a little higher if you wanted it to be. I see now that my target is not exactly on my object. And let's go ahead and name all these objects. So select your backdrop and you can rename them right here if your scene outliner is not visible. This is going to be backdrop. Select your key light and just name it key light. Select your fill light and your hair light or backlight. Now you can also adjust the color of any of these lights. Often it's a good idea to sort of make the, um, the uh, hair light a different color. You can see that adds a nice touch. You can make the key light a color as well. You could make it like an orange, sort of a contrasting color or whatever you want. You don't want to go too crazy with it though. You don't have to do this, but it's just uh, just gives you a different look. Okay, so once you're finished creating this scene, this is all we got to do. I want you to save it and name it Studio. Save it wherever you want. Make sure it's in your school folder, your DDA2 folder, or your class folder, and just click Save. Now to bring something in here, all you need to do is click File, Import, Merge, go and find something. I'm going to import one of my monsters in here. This one has toes. Select your scene file, click Open, and then you need to select the objects you want to bring in here. 
I don't think I need either one of these planes, but I do need the body, the eyes, and the eyelids. And this is why you should name all your objects. So I'm going to click OK, and that brings my creature in. He's facing the wrong way, but when he comes in, he's selected, so I can easily just turn him around. Okay, so he's not complete, but that's okay. You get the idea. And this here, our stand-in object, we could simply right-click and hide it. And then all you would have to do simply is simply render this. And once it's done rendering, just click File, Save Image, name it, and do whatever you want with it. Now when you're done doing your render, you can simply select the object you imported and delete it, because it doesn't really matter. Oops, deleted one of my lights by accident. And we're ready for the next render. Alright, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I'll see you in the next one.